O-C-A. Ocala. Flipping through channels, I don't watch TV very much anymore, but when I do, uh, if, I, if I happen to stumble upon like one of those nature videos, nature, uh-huh. nature shows, I always stop and look at them. I'm always fascinated. I, I even watch the animals in my neighborhood. I watch the squirrels. I watch the cats. Mm-hmm. I watch the cats chasing the squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> cats are, are amazing. Uh, Dr. Laura Marker is on the phone. She's one of the world's leading experts on cheetahs. Yeah. This is going to be great. I kind of wish this was TV today because uh, I'm looking at the website as to prepare for this interview and um, I, I just want to see more. I'm going to hear more in just a second. Uh, she's an expert both in the wild and in captivity. So uh, isn't that a shame, captivity? You know, one thing I'm proud of, though, that's, uh, and maybe somebody disagrees with me that knows more about this, but when you go to Tampa, uh, to what's it called, Bush Gardens? Yes. They have large, large areas. It's not like the Bronx Zoo. Yeah. I mean, the Bronx Zoo, from what I remember, was just little cages. It was mm-hmm. little, you know, compared to Tampa. Yeah. I mean, they've got gigantic fields with they're running. <laughs> and of course, Free it's roaming. not as big as if they were in their native uh, habitat. Uh, Dr. Lori Marker is also the founder and the executive director of the Cheetah Conservation Fund. She's recognized as one of Time Magazine's Heroes of the Planet. Wow. She received the Zoological Society's Conservation Medal of a Lifetime Achievement Award, and she received the Explorers Club Lowell Thomas Award, and her book is called A Future for Cheetahs. The website is cheetah.org, and uh, suddenly I'm in the mood for some Cheetos, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> saying the word cheetah so much. Dr. Lori Marker. Good morning, doctor. Hello. How are you today? Good. Boy, there's a big delay between when I say something and when you hear me. me? Yeah, I can hear you. And uh, th- I need to apologize. It's not us. It's some kind of technological thing going on where there's a long delay. So I'll, we'll try to work with that as best we can. But thank you for being on with us today. Great. Well, I am calling from Namibia, which is a long way away. It's in southern Africa. So I'm not sure if that's why the delay is there, but I bet that has something to do with it. Oh, that oh, that might be. Okay, so you're in, in, in Southern Africa. So um, do, for, I guess the first question would be, the, is there a dire need to pay attention to to cheetahs? And if, if so, what's causing their demise? Well, yes, there is. The cheetah is Africa's most endangered big cat. Today, the world population is only a thousand individuals. So we work out of Southern Africa in Namibia, which has the last large remaining population of cheetahs. And from here, our international center, the Cheetah Conservation Fund, will throughout the cheetah's range to try to save the species for future generations. Okay. And, 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 and is it Namibia? N- N- how do you say the name of the country? Namibia. So it's uh, a lot of people have a hard time pronouncing it. Namibia. Oh, with a V. And Namibia, yes, with a B. Okay, 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 got it. Okay. And it's a very large, um, very arid country. So uh, cheetahs live in arid lands throughout their their range, but we have um, about a third of the remaining world's population of cheetahs here. Oh wow! And uh, are you near a cheetah right now? got cheetahs right around me actually <laughs> uh, our center is based in the middle of the bush um and our research center basically we study the cheetahs as an international cheetah uh, foundation um so things like home range genetics lab of a veterinary lab we work with local communities to develop techniques to reduce livestock loss to birds by using things like livestock guarding dogs to protect livestock so that farmers don't have to go kill cheetahs. So we uh, are a very integrated and uh, multidisciplinary program to say 
as well as lots and lots of education to people over where you are. Okay, and and um, I don't know that there are any cheetahs down in Bush Gardens, <laughs> but I, but are there? I mean, do we have them here? They, could I go today and and see some? Yes, you absolutely could go see some at Bush Gardens, and if you go into the kiosk, you'll also see a picture of me there and learn about the work of our conservation organization help save these amazing species. You know they're the fastest land animal and the most unique of all the 30 species of cats. They're absolutely amazing. Oh, okay. Um, so so they're, they're at risk of, of being extinct because they are being hunted? Because of why? Because of just development? Why? I mean, do people hunt them for... You know what drives me nuts? And I don't, I don't know how you feel about this, Lori, but doctor, I should say, but I, what drives me nuts is when people, I hear about people who pay thousands of dollars so they can go on these safaris in Africa, where you are, mm -hmm. to shoot a lion. And there was one story about this woman, the, the woman was smiling with this deceased lion that she shot. Yeah. Be so proud of what she had done. And it was like, oh my goodness, why would you be proud of that? Mm -hmm. That just drives me nuts. I can understand, you know, killing an animal for food, but why would you kill a, a lion? Nobody eats a lion. Do people eat cheetahs? I mean... Uh, what are you? What are your thoughts on everything I just said there? No. Well, the biggest problem facing cheetahs is habitat, and that's one of the biggest issues facing most of our wildlife in the, or worldwide, primarily because of human development. Cheetahs do not do well on game, so they get pushed out, which puts them in uh, where you know, livestock farmers are, subsistence farmers, and the cheetah being a predator can catch livestock. So there is a big problem with that. Then there's a lack of prey. Cheetah is not living where all the wildlife is protected in game reserves. And these game reserves aren't large enough for cheetahs, which have huge home ranges. So their biggest problem is human-wildlife conflict. That's why we spend so much of our time with rural teaching programs that I call Future Farmers of Africa in helping them learn about wildlife, their wildlife, of having a predator on their land, and what is a cheetah and how they can live with it. And again, there's a value to these animals more through an ecotourism. So our ecotourism plays a huge role in Africa and um, understanding that people come to see birds like cheetahs and other predators, because they're, they're kind of beautiful, and then how they fit into the system is all about education. And you seem to go from one end of the spectrum to the other. Uh, we were told that you are also uh, partnering with the people that are trying to help uh, preserve the polar bear. Well, absolutely. We work together um, to climate change. And climate change is something that is affecting not just um, melting uh, sea ice, it's actually problems with arid environments. Uh, arid areas throughout Africa are actually very vulnerable to climate change. As we get um, areas that are warmer and warmer, we have already are in an area where it's warm, and then there's these adaptations that species will have to undergo, and then water. So all of these then affect the human communities, and then the human communities, and, and again, this poverty cycle, which is something that plays a very key role in species survival, animals like cheetahs, other animals like elephants and rhinos, and all of these animals are vulnerable um, living in these um, arid environments. So it's very interesting how important we've learned that the world is a very small place, and we are all a part of um, everything that goes on worldwide. Do the people in the African communities embrace you and what you're doing? They do. They are very supportive uh, of our work and want more help, more help in education, so that they can actually live more with the wildlife and profit more off of it, especially through things like ecotourism. So we welcome people to come and visit us in Namibia. Um, and from here, we've been quite a model for conservation worldwide. We have things that are called conservancies, where our rural actually um, profit by working together. You know, they're the 
working in the lodges, in their wildlife, and uh, being the tour guides. So there's a lot of shared benefits. What they like about us is we're a training facility. So we teach livestock management. We teach wildlife management. We work closely with communities in a variety of aspects of, of say, not only the chief, but entire ecosystems. They learn about the benefits of a healthy ecosystem and how it affects them and their lives. So we are very embraced by our country, our communities, and by people throughout Africa. We do lots of training with other um, cheetah range country nationals. We're learning about many of the similar kinds of programs as ours. And I would love people to know about our book that's just come out, which is which is available on our website. And, Larry, it was nice that you went to our website, which is cheetah.org, because a lot about not only the cheetah, but all of the integrated programs that go on, where we breed livestock guarding dogs and what our education look like and, and training young scientists in Africa to be geneticists. Wow. So there's a lot of go on. Uh, Dr. Lori Marker is our guest in the book. You're breaking up, a, not too bad. We were able to hear most of that. Uh, the book is called A Future for Cheetahs. I think when you said the title of the book, that was one of the moments when it went, it just crashed. Uh, a Future for Cheetahs in the website. Of that, I'm looking at it right now. It's cheetah.org. And I'm looking at a photo. I believe it's you, Dr. Lori. And um, you are standing next to a cheetah as if it's a pet. Maybe it is a pet, and it looks to me to be about the size of maybe an Irish setter. I mean, like a bigger, but not a gigantic dog. Is, am I, is that a full size? Is that a normal size cheetah? And is that your pet? I mean, are they that f able to be domesticated? Well, he's not a pet. He was an orphan. And at our sanctuary, we have about 40 cheetahs at our sanctuary right now, and we get some in as tiny babies that have to be raised on a bottle. And so the cheetah that I'm with in that picture was, that was orphaned and lived with me uh, for 16 years, a very special cheetah named Chewbacca. Most all of Chewbacca. our cheetahs that... Oh, <laughs> from <yeah>. Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. You Sorry. know, cheetahs are actually the ones that are, that are driving this, which is Earth, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh well, my I have to. Uh, doctor, I know, yeah, a sense I, of humor here and after. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and Doctor Laurie, just so you know, on our end, it's it's not breaking up as much as if there's like a huge delay, and so I, I hope it doesn't sound like we're being rude. It's not our intent, and I apologize for that. So, uh, what is your life like? Do you live there? Uh, and where did you come from? Did you uh, you sound American to me? W what's your life like? Well, I do live here. I've been here for the last 25 years, and I started working in Namibia in the middle 1970s. So I've been studying cheetahs for over 40 years, and I am from America originally. I was in my professional career started in Oregon, where I ran a wildlife park, and then I left the country five years from the Smithsonian, which is search base um, was from. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so originally from Oregon, got that much. <laughs> so, so I mean, yeah, you're obviously doing something to make us aware of something we didn't even know about. This is one of those things. I mean, we're we're all sort of kind of aware that um, we as people have done something, you know, in 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 the name of progress that may not have been the best thing for the rest of the other creatures on this planet. And so, to try to make up for that mistake. We're trying to fix things. And, and it seems like in some ways we're doing good. Uh, the alligator population is back, and some people say there's too many, at least here in Florida. Uh, and, and that was dwindling for a little while. The manatee population, I think the last I saw, the, the numbers were improving. So we are, as a, as a people, at least trying, maybe not everybody, but many of us. And, and that, that's what I'm guessing the book is going to do. Yes, um, and the book, A Future for Cheetahs, and it's on our website, which is org, or also available on Amazon. But with this, most people don't know what a cheetah is. They don't know that it is one of um, Africa's most endangered cats. They don't know that there are only 10,000 
most of them left, and they are very amazed at the model programs that we've developed with people living in harmony with a predator, which has a benefits to think about for people living with wolves or mountain lions or jaguars um, all around the world. And so our programs utilized, and I've been training people throughout Africa in learning about how predators live, how we can live with them, and it's all through understanding more about how those animals live and how we are also living with them. But the book also goes into natural history. It goes into um, mothers raising cows. Susie Estahaus, who is the photographer of the book, has uh, she's one of the most amazing furs there is uh, in the world in wildlife. A woman, both she and I, have devoted our lives to wildlife work. Um, she wildlife species as a photographer that her cheetah photos in this book are stunning. They're absolutely amazing. And I've been based in Africa now for years and um, Africa is a wonderful continent. It's got some of the most wonderful wildlife there is and some of the most amazing people there are in the world. So we um, want to make a future for the cheetah and the cheetah is very much connected to the people's lives here in Africa but I think it's a species that actually is so beautiful, the fastest land animal that people worldwide stop and think, how, well, how could we lose the fastest land animal? Yeah. What is it about, and what can we do to be a part of it? How fast is it? They can go up to 70 now, and they're a sprinter, 70. fast speed, short distances, 70. Wow. 70, wow. 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 Well, that, that I'm dead. <laughs> have you have, have you ever I mean, the one in the picture, uh, Chewbacca? Does he go seventy? <laughs> no, he did used to. He's since away, but oh, he he's, oh, he's very fast. Died. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. uh, you 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 worked with the National Cancer Institute with their researchers there. How did that work uh, open your eyes and help you with working with the cheetah? Well, our early recently, early uh, 1980s, and we found that the cheetah lacks genetic diversity. So this has been kind of a driving force and an underlying problem for the cheetah as we've learned more about the importance of their genetics and uh, how it affects production and diseases and how vulnerable a species it is genetically similar or compromised, how vulnerable it is to environmental and ecological changes. So that's helped us even push more of our programs, working with, again, the, the people of Africa to try to understand the cheetah and live with it and grow the numbers. But remember that there are only thousand of them left, and they live in very fragmented, small areas and small numbers, which makes them even more vulnerable genetically. Do are cheetahs monogamous? Do once they hook up, that's their partner for life? Well, a mother lives with her cubs on their own, and males um, stay together as brothers, forming what are called coalitions, and they stay together their whole lives. And a female does have mate choice. They do not stick together. She'll breed, go away, and then raise her cubs, and she sticks with her cubs for about 18 months. So there's quite a long period really? of time that she raises her cubs. And is there a personality difference? And so the male, oh, I, I, between males and females? Yes, yes. Um, well, males are tougher. Um, they hunt larger. Um, Personality-wise, females, I think, are amazing. They have definitely a survival instinct of raising their cubs. Um, they're, they're, they're having to hunt for their cubs. So they're constantly aware. They're villain, you know, they're everything that's going on. They're the most amazing hunters. So they, they're, they're all very wonderful. Um, they are very unique in what their vocalization is. Cheetahs chirp like birds. They have a dog they like chirp. bark. Uh, they purr. Really? They, they're, it's amazing. Wow. Oh, wow. Um, so, uh, 
they're they're just they're they're very very special. They don't roar, and you know things that people don't know is they are the only um, big cat that has semi non retractable claws. They're the only cat that does. So their claws look more like claws, which their running ability. Oh wow! Uh, Again, our book. Yeah, let me let me let me kind of repeat our that. Our book tells a lot about. Again, <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's it's the delay. It's causing us to be yeah, awkward here. Uh, real quickly, just let me repeat. Dr. Lori Marker is who you've been listening to, and uh, this has been recorded, so uh, you'll be able to listen to it again and uh, and share it. The book is called A Future for Cheetahs, and the website is cheetah.org, and uh, there's a way, and let me ask him to make sure I know about this. Uh, Dr. Lori, is, can I buy the book on the website? Yes, you can, and you can buy it on our website, cheetah.org, or through Amazon. So just go to our website and learn about what we do as well. But buy the book. It's a really good book for a lot of different reasons. Yeah, and so it's a photo book, correct? It is. It's about 200 pages of some of the most stunning and beautiful wildlife photography ever done on cheetahs, cheetah cubs. And um, and it also has a lot of, well, I wrote it, as Haas was the photographer, and instead of just having a pretty picture book, we also added information extremely important for people to know about the cheetah, what its problems are, what their solutions are for the future. Survive. Okay. Uh, well, again, I love this topic, and uh, thank you so much for calling in. In Namibia, over in the southwest coast of Africa, I looked that up <laughs> online. I wouldn't have known that otherwise. Uh, uh, Dr. Lori Marker, thank you for being on the air with us. Again, for the listeners, the book is called A Future for Cheetahs. Go to cheetah.org, and uh, you'll see the, the lots of the information, lots of Stuff to look at there, but uh, get the book and you'll see even more. Uh, Dr. Marker, thank you so much for being on the air with us today. Thank you very much, and you're always welcome to the Namibia. <laughs> yeah, I would love to go there. That would be great. I'll bring my camera. That does sound great. And and uh, Robin will make sure you get the, the uh, link to the recording we just made of this interview, okay? Thanks. Thanks doctor? a lot. Okay. Thank you, doctor. All right. We'll take a little break. We'll be right back. Habitat for Humanity of Marion County is a ministry dedicated to improving lives by providing affordable and decent housing. Help them help others by visiting the Habitat for Humanity Ocala Restore at 926 Northwest 27th Avenue. 